Hello everyone, this is Amritpal Singh. Welcome to the next video. Guys, in this video, I'm going to discuss how we can implement the logistic regression in R. Right? In a previous video, I've already explained what's the meaning of logistic regression. But in this video, we're going to discuss how we can implement the same in R language. So let's get started. For this video, I'm going to use a data set which I'm going to show you right now. It is this uh, data set with the name social network ads in which we got uh, five columns available, uh, user ID, gender, age, estimated salary and purchase. So what's the concept is that it's a social media data and we are going to predict based upon the age and estimated salary column whether the person is going to purchase the product or not. Here it is zero and one indicates one means is going to purchase, zero means is not going to purchase. Okay, this is we're going to predict using logistic regression classification. All right. Let's get started. So in this case, uh, first of all, we need to do is like we need to uh, go inside our studio and let's load the data set. So this data set we're going to load. First of all, I'm going to load it maybe in some variable name. I'm going to call it as G1 and read dot CSV. And first of all, I need to load from my D drive. It's available in my D drive. Okay. Uh, with the name social network ads okay dot csv and file equal to sorry header equal to true header equal to true done so we got g1 uploaded all right moving further afterwards uh, because this g1 is having some other columns as well like user id gender it's not going to play any role in our practicals we need to get rid of that so we need to do subsetting here i don't want the first two columns and the index of r start from one so we know so that what we can do is we can simply write here g1 equal to g1 three column five three column five it means i just want three columns to be incorporated not the first two we are done afterwards what we do, what we need to do is we need to load our library Okay, the library which we have used in our previous practicals as well, CA tools and CA tools is one of the important uh, library because we're going to use it for uh, splitting our data into training and testing set. CA tools, I've already used it in, a, in my one of my videos earlier as well, CA tools uploaded and we also we can do set.seed just to initialize some value here, any value you can put it here. All right, we are done. Afterwards, let's split the data into two uh, training and testing. So split equal to uh, sample.split function we're going to use. And here we're going to have first is G1 means my data set, which column purchased. Okay. And the split ratio I'm going to use as 75%. It means whatever number of data we are having, we're going to divide into training and testing. All right. Uh, we have done. Okay. It is S capital split ratio done so now uh, let's in, uh, put it in our training and testing set okay i'm gonna use the word train trains equal to uh, subset function subset uh, then we're gonna def uh, write here the data set name and split equal to true split equal to true okay done and in the same way what we can do is we can write here test okay equal to g1 split equal to false so with this your data will be divided into two parts training and testing part we can check as well trains and test done okay afterwards what to do uh, because this data set is having one little issue is available because this estimated salary is a very uh, this data set have a little uh, some huge value available right the age value is very less and the estimated salary is little uh, like bigger, right? It is in a five digits. It is in a two digits. Okay. I don't want that the estimated salary given more preference for prediction. So what, what, what I want is I want both the columns on the, on the same scale. So we need to do as a part of data pre-processing to do the scaling. So let's do the scaling. In this case, what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to use this trans and this uh, test and we don't want third column to be included so that's why we have using negation three minus three meaning is third column because third column we need to predict this this uh, zero and one thing we, get, we don't want to predict that purchase column so did this thing we, i don't want to include in my uh, consideration so that's the reason i'm just using minus three here and i'm going to use simple scale function to scale the things and here again we need to uh, pass the same trans this trains and then minus three okay we are done in the same way we can do for tests also so T E S T S and minus three, and we're going to use the same scale function and it is on test and it is minus three. 
we are done all right so scaling has been done you can also check now the updated value of trans and test you can see uh, nothing is uh, bigger nothing is smaller both the columns are on a same scale now okay we have done this successfully afterwards what to do now the next step is to apply the logistic regression to the training set and i'm going to use here some something classifier and here i'm going to use the function called glm glm stand for generalized linear model okay here we're going to use only three uh, major uh, major parameters first is formula formula that we generally use is dependent variable tilde sign independent variable so dependent variables is purchased and tilde sign independent variables and we know the shortcut in r dot indicates all the independent variables in our case we have a two independent variables age column and salary column okay and then we're going to use second uh, parameter is family for this we're going to use binom binomial as a family binom binomial as a family okay third one is data the data obviously it will be training set so trains done okay we have just fit the logistic regression to the training set now let's try to predict the test set results okay uh, this uh, results will be uh, will be submitted will be will be getting those results in a probability basis okay we can check now so we're going to use probability prediction as a name equal to predict function we're going to use predict so first argument will be classifier that we have done with the class f comma type equal to response this is as per the documentation okay the family equal to binomial and type equal to response is all as per the documentation guide okay type equal to response and we need to write it in a single quotes it's a type comma and then the new data new data will be what it will be test set which is test and negation minus 3 meaning is that in this case we don't want to include the third column okay let's see the answers probe pred okay so we as i've already told you that the result will be getting will be will be getting those results in probability so you can see we have a this much of probability that person is going to product, uh, purchase the product or not this is a probability like it's in a zero and one okay uh, you can see let's suppose the first uh, value that we have in the data set is it is zero it means that person is not going to purchase that product as per our own results also we are getting very lesser probability it's just zero point 016 is very lesser probability and let's check out uh, where we got one we are getting one at this uh, this one uh, this ninth index okay this one and let's see what we got here in in this case okay uh, against this nine okay uh, we need to check wait 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 so in this case you can see where, where wherever we are having the higher probability you can see i can show you like this is a highest probability 0.85 means 85 percent okay it is 99 percent it means these guys are going to purchase the product it means they are equivalent to once but again but the, from this probability we're not getting uh, the clear picture that whether the person is going to uh, like get a uh, purchase a product or not what we can do is we can simply use here if else function of the r studio of the r language just to convert we can have a condition that if we have a probability more than 50 percent that person is going to purchase a product if the probability is less than 50 percent the person is not going to purchase the product this is a point okay so what we can do is uh, we can use now a simple uh, prediction okay and here we can simply use if else function if else if the probability is more than 0 0.5 okay the result will be 1 otherwise result will be 0 okay it's a basic uh, if else function we have in uh, in the r okay in this case what it indicates that if the probability is more than 50 percent then then pre replace the, that answer with the 1 otherwise it will be 0 okay let's see the answers now you can see now we got answers zeros okay you can see let's see the test set first okay this is the test results and you can see these are the results we got okay 
in it what it indicates that zero indicates that where the probability is less than 50% it is replacing it with the zero and wherever we are having more than 50% it's getting one okay like 22 22 is having one 22 is having one means there must be some misclassified as well because no algorithm is properly 100% correct accurate right so in this case wherever zero means we have less than less than 50% probability we are replacing it with a zero if we are having more than 50% probability we are replacing it with the one means somewhere we are having a wrong answers as well let's do how we can check with that we can check with the help of confusion matrix okay the last step of this whole video is to just do the uh, uh, checking whether we got the right results or wrong results what's the total uh, overall count available so what we can do is we can just make a confusion matrix so confusion matrix we're gonna have with the help of table function we can have the table function that is inbuilt function in r in this case we're gonna pass here the test results so test and minus three okay and then we can have a the probability which is greater than 0.5 okay wait 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 uh pre okay table function then we can use sorry it is not minus 3 my bad it is 3 okay now it is okay all right cm Okay, this is the answer we got. Just see what's the answer we got. In this case, this diagonal thing, 57 plus 26. Okay, these are all are correct. Okay, these all are correct. And this 10 plus 7 means they are mismatching. Mismatching meaning is that it is misclassified. It means out of 57 plus 26, how much it is uh, uh, 57 plus 26. It is, if you can count it is i'm using calculator here 57 plus 26 it is 83 83 means it is properly classified and 17 are not properly classified right this is the answer we got i hope you must have understood with this confusion matrix so i hope from this whole little video you must have understood how we can implement the logistic regression in r studio if you have any doubt any concern with this video if something is not clear please do comment okay i'll be waiting for your feedback thanks for watching guys see you next video